talked about it in the closed injuries section or, or closed wounds. Uh, it just means that because of the crush injury, the actual skin opened up. Bite uh, wounds would obviously be also open. Blast, we talked about that. So you guys have an idea of how that can cause an open wound, right? From the physical impact of the body slamming to the ground or the wall, or even from the shrapnel that's, that's, that's spit out from the blast itself. Um, and high pressure injection uh, injuries would be from pressurized machinery, most likely. So go ahead and write these down as well. And then that should be the, all the different types of open wounds will come into contact. You guys need more time or you guys good? Good. Good, all right, here we go. Uh, all right, so patient care. So what do we do for for uh, these wounds? First off, we wanna expose the wound. We wanna make sure that wherever the wherever the, pla the patient is complaining of the injury, we wanna expose that section completely and get a real good visual of, of what we're working on. Now, if it's an open wound, if it's an open wound, we want to clean the surface. Now, this doesn't mean that we have to get super clean like in a hospital. We just have to be clean enough to, we can, to where we can see what we're doing and get as much debris off. Uh, because when they go to the hospital, they'll make sure that they take care of uh, cleaning out the wound and making sure that there's no infection or taking care of any infection. Obviously, after that, we want to control the bleeding if there is bleeding. Our go-to for, for uh, bleeding control is always going to be direct pressure. That is our very first thing to do is direct pressure. After that, we bandage the wound if that helps. If not, then we know we proceed accordingly, depending on where the site is. See, for all serious wounds, provide care for shock, including administration of oxygen concentration, prevent further contamination. All right. See, bandage dressing in place after bleeding and control. So I'm pretty sure I talked about this uh, last class. But once you apply that dressing onto your patient's wound, you do not take that dressing off. Who can remember why you do not take a dressing off that you have already applied onto your patient? See, Desiree. That, yeah, that clot's already formed. And if you rip off the bandage, you're going to rip the clot off and then it's just going to bleed again. Perfect. Not, not only are you going to um, take off the clot that's already formed, but because it's gonna to stick to the bandage that whatever is already clotting, you're also gonna tear off additional tissue and cause even further damage. Good job. <clears throat> so keep patient lying still, reassure patients. Okay. So treating specific types of open wounds. Here we go. Uh, so reduce wound contamination. We talked about that. Um, Hold direct pressure to control. We talked about that. Always check pulse, motor, and sensory function distal to injury to assure function. So just as you, as you guys would uh, check for circulation, motor, and sensory when you guys were putting your patient on a longboard and a kid after you did it, just uh, it's the same concept. After you've bandaged up a limb um, or any section of the body, you want to check the distal pulses from that injury itself. And you want to make sure that your bandage or whatever you did for the patient did not cut off circulation. That's the whole point behind that. For penetrating to, uh, objects, usually you'll leave them in place. So I'm just going to go and see bullet by bullet. Use caution as objects may be embedded deeper than they may appear. Check for exit wounds, may acquire immediate care. So yes, you always wanna check for exit wounds and see, bullets can fracture bones as they enter. That is true, that is true. I don't see how that would really help you out, but that is true. Stab wounds are considered serious if in a vital area of the body. So the, the thoracic cavity would be very vital because you have two vital organs there. You have your heart and your lungs. 
Now, as far as for impel penetrating objects, oh, I'm sorry, I was thinking about impelled objects. So penetrating objects it mean, just means that the 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 bullet or the object went in and out of the body. That's usually what that means. Usually they always go out, but not, but that's not always the case. But usually it is the case. If it's a bullet, it's always just going to be an exit wound, unless we're talking about a smaller caliber bullet, like a 22, maybe even a nine. If it if it hits a bone, um, there are cases where it will just shatter bone and the bullet may stay inside the body. That that is also a possibility. And with the stab wound. So if the patient has a, an impelled object, let's say the knife is still in their stomach, um, you you don't know how long that knife actually is. And you don't know if the knife was impelled as it was found or if it was impelled at an angle and then straightened out. So be very careful with that as well. And there's always a potential for more injury with these patients. So we wanna reassure the patient uh search for exit wound we talked about that there may not always be an exit wound assess need for basic life support okay so bullet travels an unpredictable path once they are inside the patient's body um and this is mainly if there's if it hit a bone that's when the, you really don't know what happened but the biggest thing be, besides the actual trajectory of this bullet, the, the path of the bullet, is that there's something called cavitation. So cavitation is when a temporary cavity is formed. So a cavity is like a, it's a, a big space. So you, when you have, ca you, you have cavities in your teeth, that means you have holes in your teeth, right? It's a cavity, it's a hole. So when a bullet travels along the body like this, it's going to make that bullet has force behind it, right? So it's going to create wave forces that go outward. They're going to spread outward from the bullet. It's going to spread this way, and it's going to spread this way. And that forms a temporary cavity. Well, because that cavity is formed, now the tissues around the pathway of the bullet are going to be compressed. So not only is there the actual pathway of the bullet, which there is going to be physical damage, but also there's secondary damage from that force and it could cause tearing away from the actual bullet pathway. So that's one thing that you, you should also know about penetrating traumas. Uh, gunshot wound. So here's a patient with a gunshot wound. Uh, okay, so now we're going to impelled objects. So impelled objects are, are objects that did penetrate the body but are still in the body. They're impelled inside the body. Again, we want to expose the area, uh, control perfusion, direct pressure as needed. And then with impelled objects, what we're going to do is we're going to give bulky dressing. We want to secure, we want to secure the object uh, um, to the bulky dressing, or we want to pat around the object to kind of make it make more sense. And again, the, this lecture is something that we're going to have to go over in person when we see each other uh, to really get a better understanding and get some hands on. But I'm going to try to do my best to kind of just talk through it. But an impelled object, you want to stabilize that in place. Uh, like it says here in this bulletin, apply several layers of bulky dressing. So dressing surrounds the object on all sides. Uh, secure dressing in place. Now, there is no set protocol for this. You just make it work however you can make it work because impelled objects can go in any part of the body and you just have to just make it work. You know, put the bulky dressings wherever it makes sense. Strap it down to wherever it makes sense. Obviously, the patient's gonna be bleeding, so we have to prepare to, to care for shock. As an EMT, all we can do for shock is give them oxygen, keep them warm, and position and a um, position of comfort. And it's just situational, depending on where the impelled object is, how it happened, where it happened. Uh, keep patient at rest. Uh, keeping them at rest does keep them calm too, so that's why that's really important. So here you go. So this is an impelled object on the forearm. So it's a good little example. It shows you um, here's the object, and these are the bulky dressings. So a bulky dressing is just it's a general term for any dressing that's sterile that, that's bulky that can be used. 
Um, and in the back of your rig, you'll have several different several different types of dressings. You'll have big dressings, little dressings, bulky dressings. Um, and then you just use whatever you see best fits your scenario. And then here they are uh, securing the bulky dressing onto the, the actual extremity. And you have to make sure you leave the object, leave room for the object to protrude out so you don't cause more damage. So why would we why would we not want to take out an appelled object? Who can tell me? It can cause more damage. Yeah, so you can cause more damage on the way out. And also the impelled object may have actually stopped bleeding. So if you take it out, now you're gonna open up um a clock. So that's why. Um, we'll go ahead and take a little 10 minute break right here.